Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Today it is 81 degrees Fahrenheit, 27 degrees Celsius. It is uh, December 10th in Southwest Florida and it is a beautiful day. Uh, what I wanted to do is share with you some information on where all these guys came from. Uh, plants, but more importantly, the orchids uh, and where they came from. And, and it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to you that these guys come from seed. Uh, but what I want to do is tell you a little bit about that journey of growing orchid plants from seed and tell you what's going on and tell you where they actually come from. Uh, so first of all, let's take a look at uh, where they do come from. And what I, what I have right here are, is a plant that I pollinated, flowers that I pollinated. And this is a capsule right here from, uh, that was pollinated from a, a flower that was pollinated about five months ago. Here's a capsule right here uh, from a flower that I pollinated about four months ago. And it takes uh, a few months for these, it was heavy pot, it takes a few months for the seed in those capsules to develop. And before you can do anything with them, you have to wait, uh, at least with Cattleya, this was a Cattleya, this is um, <clears throat> Ports of Paradise Emerald Isle. And this Cattleya, it takes, it's going to take about six months for the seed capsules to be mature enough to do anything with them. It's going to take about seven or eight months for them to get large and split. So uh, what I want to do though is, is, is share with you um, the journey and where, how long it takes to get these things to, uh, to form plants and, um, and, and then down the road uh, flower. Uh, so first of all, the number of seeds that's in those capsules, orchid seeds are dust-like, they're tiny. And these are, you know, con considering they, ca they, they contain these really dust-like seeds, um, there are lots of seeds in those seed capsules. So there are anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 quarter million seed in those capsules. So what happens to them in, in the wild, in nature? And so they are, because they're dust-like, when the capsule matures, they'll split and they'll, they'll get um, spread by the wind. And if you have 100,000 quarter million seed in each one of those capsules, and a lot of these plants contain many capsules, why aren't we completely inundated with orchids everywhere, which would be great kind of no it really would be so but this doesn't happen and very few of those individual seeds survive in the wild how do they survive what's going on you know you can go out and look at some of the native orchids and some of them are pretty prolific and some of them will produce lots of seeds and those seeds will survive but for the most part seed survival of orchids in the wild is very very low they have to land in the right spot uh, under the right conditions and they have to be associated with certain type of organisms in order to germinate and grow. And the type of organisms that they have to, and I'm sorry I have to put out some terms here for you, but the organisms that they associate with are um, mycorrhizae. And right here, and this is a mycorrhizae inoculant. Uh, mycorrhizae are, you can break the word down, myco means fungal or, or fungal associated, fungal like, and rhizae mean roots. So these are fungal, these are fungi. Uh, these are organisms that associate with the seed and actually um, feed the embryo within the seed when the seed is very young. And in, in, in really most cases, you have to have mycorrhizae associated with the seed in order to get orchid seed germination. And so this is, this is interesting. What mycorrhizae are, they're part of another, I'm going to have to bring in another word, they're part of the microbiome that's associated with these um, native orchids. So the microbiome, everyone has a microbiome, every organism has associated with it a lot of different microorganisms that can contribute to growth. Okay, so we have microbiomes in our gut, on our skin, everywhere. The plants have microbiomes as well, and there are bacteria, fungi, there are organisms, and, and many of them are good, and they're actually groups that study which combination of microorganisms contribute 
to plant growth and it's an exciting new area to uh, actually plant seeds that have certain micro mycorrhizae associated with it. In orchids, the mycorrhizal association is beneficial for seed, initial seed germination and seed growth. So if you put these things on your orchid plants now, especially if you treat them, if you fertilize them, if they're watered, if everything is done right, they, it won't do too much. It won't do anything. If, if it does anything, it's going to take a long time to see it. Um, I actually bought this. As I buy most things from Amazon, and I bought it to uh, to inoculate some other plants. And, and because what happens is these organisms can combat maybe some of the other organisms that are detrimental. So with all these microbiomes, you have to have the proper balance of different microorganisms uh, in the microbiome. You have to have the balance of organisms that, in order to get the best growth, in order to have them competing in the right way. So, uh, but, but you can, if you want to try this, go ahead. If you have a story of how this worked for you in your orchids, I'd love to hear about it. Um, so anyway, but that's what happens uh, in nature is that you have these, uh, the certain, the naturally occurring mycorrhizae. And there's, I should also say, there are many different types of mycorrhizal organisms. They're all different types of fungi uh, that are associated with the plant, but there's, there's groups and there's collections and there's certain types that are associated with certain plants. So you can go to native orchids and, ex and pull out the mycorrhizae that are associated with them and try to use that to enhance growth of, or, or I'm sorry, seed germination of the native, the native orchids. Um, but in reality, what, what and, and this still gives, even though you have the proper mycorrhizae associated with it, it still gives very low germination of seeds. So it's not going to give you a huge number of seeds and seed germination and seed growth is going to be slow as it is in, in nature. Um, if you want, I've heard stories, you can take these capsules um, and at the right time and then rub them on the bark of certain trees and then you can get growth uh, because there are, like I said, a quarter million seeds in there. You can get growth of a few plants. On, on the plant that you rub the capsule on. So you can try this also and let me know what happens. But the reality of it is still it's going to be low. It's going to be really, really tiny amount of seeds. In order to get high frequency seed germination of orchids, you have to use uh, the tissue culture process. And this is what I do uh, in the laboratory. I take these seed capsules when they're at the right point. You can also take mature seed capsules that are split if the seed isn't dispersed. And you collect that seed and you can put them in uh, tissue culture. So you sterilize the capsules. You plate out the seed and you can put them on medium and you get very, very high efficiency um, seed germination. And, and actually the reality of it is it's not really germination. You have the formation of uh, protocorms. Uh, the embryo that's inside each, each seed has an embryo and the embryo, I should say, doesn't have an endosperm. So there's nothing to feed the embryo as it's germinating in the seed. Uh, in, in many other plants, uh, in corn, it has a huge endosperm that can feed the developing embryos. And that's what we're used to seeing. In orchids, there's no endosperm associated with it, and that in part is the function of the mycorrhizae. Uh, the mycorrhizae is associates with the seed, and it actually feeds the growing embryo inside the seed of, of orchid. Um, for other plants, again, what you have is endosperm, which is the uh, contains all the carbohydrates and proteins that the seedling embryo needs for early growth. Orchid doesn't quite have that situation, but still there's lots of seeds. So what we do in the laboratory is we take, well, what we do is we take these seeds into the laboratory. We plate them on a medium that acts like an endosperm that has all the carbohydrates, minerals, nutrients, vitamins that the, that the embryo embryo needs. And then that embryo, the, the cells in that embryo proliferate and it forms protocorms. You don't really get roots right away. You don't get shoots right away. You get a, you get a proliferation of the cells in the embryo to form protocorms. And that's what we have. And so what I have, I want to show you some a video of some seeds that I take, took and plated. These are dendrobiums that I plated about three weeks ago. And what you can see, what you hopefully, hopefully can see is the embryo that's inside those 
uh, seeds, it swells and they start to proliferate and they start to turn a little green within three weeks. And you can see with the naked eye, you can see green, green specks on the dish. All right, and these are dendrobiums. The next thing that I want to show you is what is seeds that we have from um, Encyclia. And this is Encyclia tampensis, which is a native orchid uh, in, in Florida. And these are protocarms that have already formed, and these were from embryos that were plated six weeks ago. So you can see how quickly things happen in culture. Um, these protocarms can then be taken and transferred to a second medium that will give even more rapid growth. So what we have when we bring these seeds uh, into the laboratory is we have very rapid growth and you have very high survival rate. And the exciting thing about this is that you can get a lot more seeds <laughs> to develop into plants, but you can get a lot more combinations of genes in there because so many of the seeds survive and develop. And that's what's really exciting is you can do a lot of things. Even if you have plants that have, even if you have pods that have capsules that contain very few seeds, those few seeds will survive. And this is something that is not likely at all to occur, occur in nature. So you can get very high frequency survival of these seeds to form protocorms and plants and then you can get high plant recovery, which is pretty exciting. Uh, it's exciting, but it also means that you'll have tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of, of seedlings, and you gotta figure out what to do with all of them, which is, you know, for some of you, it's, it's a good thing. All right, as these things grow, they proliferate, uh, the, the, they, they multiply, they grow, and they do well. And, and I guess what, I'm, what I wanna tell you is that most of the orchids that you have in your collection were made in a laboratory. All right, that's just how it is. All of the large orchid uh, laboratory, all the large orchid growers make their orchids initially from seed in the laboratory. You can proliferate that. You can still split, um, you know, you can split the plants um, that way, but it's just a very, very slow process. And what most people do is generate literally tens or hundreds of thousands of seedlings, and that's what they grow and that's what they uh, distribute. So it's an inter interesting story. You can also clone these these orchids by taking the um, the eye, and there's a lot of eyes as you go up the um, as, as you go up the leaf. Um, you can find a lot of eyes, and you can actually excise the eye and clone and proliferate very quickly uh, a certain orchid that has very high value. But most of them are, most of the orchids, and they're all from seed originally, and then most of the orchids, um, you know, were, were, you know, are just propagated, uh, are made this way by growing in the laboratory. To give you an idea how long things take, it still takes a long time to have flowering plants from seed. Um, the phalaenopsis are pretty, pretty quick to bloom from seed. Uh, that requires about three years. Uh, most plants, it's four to five years from seed to flower. And I've got some, some examples here of some plants that I've taken from, that I, they actually grew from seed. And this is a Lelia pumila right here. And this, I just looked in my notebook uh, today, and this, the seed from this plant was uh, put in culture in October of 2019. So this is a little over two years old. It's still small, but it's well on its way to, um, to for, for, for flowering. It still probably has a couple more use, years. This is in Encyclia tampensis. And this is the same thing. This was, these seed were plated the same day that the Lelia pumila was plated. So this is the, uh, the butterfly orchid right here. So this is a little over two years from seed. And this is actually pretty good growth. What happens in culture when you put things in the laboratory is they grow really, really uh, quickly. And this is, these are a little over two years old. I have some other, other plants right here that I want to share with you. Uh, so this is a, uh, an orchid self that I made. And again, this, this plant is a little bit, it's about two years from seed. This will get quite a bit larger. And so I think I probably have about another three years uh, to flower from this guy. Uh, the final thing is the dendrobium. So this is a dendrobium uh, that I grew from seed as well. And these might be flowering a little bit earlier. So this is this is a little less than two years old, and this is a pretty big plant for for being just two years old. So um, I'm hoping that this will flower in another another year or two. But we'll see, and I'll keep you updated. 
So that's all I have for today. I just wanted to share with you the secret that most of the orchids that you have in your collection were generated in a laboratory like the ones that I work in. Um, and that's it. If you're interested in learning more about the work that I do and about orchids and about propagation, please subscribe to my channel. So, happy propagating.